to start noising about. I hope we can. Um, are you recording with, with that uh, um, yeah, microphone, uh, or are you going to write it down? Uh, or are you calling we're recording both? a video. Because okay. uh, I don't have a decent dictaphone at the moment. Saving up for one more. Yeah. Mm. yeah. They're going to be quite loud in the moment, so we may want to keep it close enough for recording the sound. Yeah. Okay, is it recording? It is. Right. Uh, nice to meet you, Harry. Um, how are you doing, man? I do well. Um, our first um, headliner show in the UK and sold out and um, yeah. really makes us happy. Yeah, yeah it looks to be, uh, that it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I uh, hope so. Um, uh, uh, first question then, uh, it's um, a fan question. Uh, where do you feel that the um, the development of Tears Sound will um, lead to in the future, especially concerning uh, the next album? Uh, well, I think we will continue in the same way we have done already. I mean, we keep... Um, the one constant is, is the traditional influence, yeah. uh, traditional lyrics and traditional melodies. Yeah. And it's gone from progressive to, to a more um, accessible music. Yeah. Uh, it's almost pop metal by now. Um, yeah. So it's very catchy and, and, and uh, at least uh, uh, we think it is uh, at the risk of sounding arrogant. And uh, oh, yes. uh, we try to um, you know, just make it simpler and, and, and catchier and I think we're going to continue that way. Yeah. Yeah. And and still keeping the folk uh, yeah. traditional influence. Uh, and speaking of the uh, folk and traditional influences, um, when you're writing the songs, like um, you know, um, which do you sort of like write first, like the traditional and folk melodies, or do you focus more on the metal part when you you know when you first start writing a song? I always start with a melody. Yeah. And, um, and mostly it's traditional. Sometimes I, I make it up myself. And. Um, and then I, I I do the harmonization and the uh, uh, and the um, uh, chord progressions and, and after that you know I sort of put the metal on make guitar riffs to, to fit to all that yeah and, and the rhythms and all that yeah um what would you say uh, is your favorite and um, least favorite songs to um, play live and why. Uh, my favorites are always the ones that get the best uh, reaction from the people. Yeah. If, if I like the songs or not, uh, I, I tend to. They tend to grow on me. Uh, well, I don't think we ever made a song I really don't like. Yeah. I, I, that would be strange. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna record this and release it, even though I hate it. <laughs> that, that never yeah. happens. Um, but say, for example, two songs yeah. like uh, "Hold the Hidden Hammer High" and "And um, By the Sword in My Hand." Yeah. Um, I thought at the time they were quite simple and, and um, maybe a bit cheap compared to our yeah. other material, but people simply love it when we play play them live, yeah. and and that you know makes you feel good about it. So so that makes me like them f from a different angle. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you could go back to your um, self uh, back when you were seventeen, when you um, played in Cruiser, um, what would you say to yourself? I have to strangle you now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, that, that was a fun question just for the record. I would tell myself, pull your sorry ass together and practice more and, and make make a reasonable career out of it as soon as you can. I was really slow in, yeah. in uh, it was not before I was 27 that I really decided, okay, I'm going to do music for the rest of my life because that's the only thing I want to do. Yeah. And it simply took me, it took me way too long to get to that. Yeah. And if I could meet myself uh, at, at age 17 I would encourage myself to, to do those things a lot faster and and, uh, and just realize much earlier that I'm gonna be a musician because it's the only thing I well I, I didn't really choose to do it. it it chose me I don't really don't feel I have a choice yeah. it's the only thing I can and want to do yeah and um, well Going back to your answer just then, um, when you first um, formed Tear, um, did you ever think that you know you'd get to the point where you're at now, like uh, with the European tours and playing festivals around the world? I lost your thread there for a second. Can you repeat that? Yeah. Uh, did, like you know, when um, Tear first formed, did you ever feel that you know you get to the point where you are now um, compared to when you first started? If I really honestly thought so, probably not. But but when you make a band, you you have you know ridiculously high expectations. Yeah. And, and uh, if you'd asked me back then, 
if, if I thought we would be here today. I, I would probably say I don't think so, but I really hope so, and, and I'm gonna do my best at least. So, uh, so uh, no. Yeah, all right. Um, how would you compare um, shows here in the UK to um, shows that you played like in Europe in the United States? Uh, it's 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 really not that different. Um, it's a long time ago since we played it in the UK, and I can't really remember. <clears throat> I think we had some strange crowds every now and then. Yes. Not not put together in the same way as as crowds in Germany. In Germany, for example, you see almost exclusively people with with long hair uh, and and black clothes. Yeah. And it's a little bit more mixed. I have the feeling in the UK, a bit like in, in Scandinavia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, actually, speaking of um, Scandinavia, uh, well, more specifically uh, the Faroe Islands, um, for you personally, um, from Faroese culture and history, who would you say is like the sort of most significant figure that sticks out to you the most? You mean in Faroese history in general? Yeah, like from any sort of era in Faroese history, so, you know, could be like from the Viking Age or sort of more recent times? I, I would start with, uh, you know, Krummer Kampan, not other first year, Trondre Goto. Yeah. Um, the, the settlers and and, uh, and the very first the, the very first people to live there and go go on to Iceland from there and then the, the resistance against Christianity of course yeah but if that's historically correct it's a very different question or I mean if there's any historic accuracy in it is is a very different question so so it's for more ideological reasons that one would say that yeah. but more recently uh, people like uh, Johan's Pavlov, uh, you know, liberalists and and, yeah. uh, and nationalists and and uh, and uh, well, and the modernizers of, of the Faroese culture, like like uh, Hammerstein, uh, who made the who, who uh, standardized the written language, and, and the first modern poet, um, Jans Juros, yeah, and uh, people like that. Uh, so yeah, I would have a few um, heroes. <laughs> From Faroese, uh, yeah, there's some good choices there as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, uh, the band's name Tears taken from the uh, Norse god of justice. Um, is there like a specific reason for like choosing his name compared to like uh, the other sort of figures found in like the poetic Edda and uh, the Icelandic sagas and stuff? Um, we we uh, decided very early on that that choosing a name like Odin or Thor was way too uh, direct yeah. and it doesn't matter if, if, if the mythological aspect is a bit hidden for people, not everyone knows that Thor is, is a god from mythology, yeah. it, it may say nothing to most people yeah. and probably not, uh, uh, unless you're into a mythology already, if you're yeah. not you probably have no idea what it means yeah. and, and that I think is, is um, um, a good approach to, to start listening to music without any sort of prejudice, any expectations, and yeah. then just see if you like it or not, regardless of what, what style it is. Yeah. Um, so that was one reason I, I think we chose that name. Um, uh, also inspired by the Black Sabbath album called Tour. Yeah, so, I, I know um, that album. So, um, also the logo is inspired from, from the cover of that uh, yeah. album. So. Um, and third, of course, uh, the stories about the mythological stories about Twitter are very uh, interesting. Yeah, like uh, how he uh, risked one of his own hands. To precisely, like precisely. That, that's a very, very fascinating story. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite familiar with that. So yeah. I'll uh, copy the poetic header at home myself. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, going back to uh, the, uh, the mythology uh, part of your answer, uh, if you could choose to be uh, a figure from like uh, the Uh, which figure would you be and why? Uh, that's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Uh, I, even though I find Thor quite fascinating, I've, I've always been most fascinated by Thor and, and his, his um, instant you know, popularity in, in, yeah. in both historically and, and in the present 
I guess so. I would think I would have to go for the juicy answer and say Thor. Yeah. Um, That's understandable, you know. Big guy gets the girls, and uh, loved by everybody. Exactly. Yeah. To be truthful, I wouldn't mind being him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's just he just he just made uh, to be such a person. He, he is that uh, the most popular, the most yeah. powerful, the most this, the most that. Uh, done to uh, in, in a way to to attract that sort of uh, attention. So uh, yeah, I, I'd have to go for that. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, Tears played um, here in the UK uh, quite a few times in the past. Um, what would you, for you personally, what's uh, you know like the best thing about coming across to Britain and playing here? Um, well, it's, um, it's a completely new market for us in a way. Yeah, just to uh, expand our area and, and to get into the uh, British uh, market, I, I think it's great. And, and uh, that also gives you a feeling that you're really getting somewhere. You know? yeah. musician by nature I, I was born with absolutely no uh, talent uh, ex except stubbornness so uh, that's all I have so all I have to be is, is stubborn to, to uh, uh, achieve what I want and, and there's there's no um, shortcuts I have to practice and practice all the time and I have to work really hard at, at the stuff that, that I do uh, that was uh, it took me quite a long time to realize, and 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 but realizing that uh, has made things a lot better. Um, so that's definitely one big thing. Yeah. All right. Um, last question now. Um, what? Um, I probably got to pronounce the, the title name wrong. I will um, murder you if you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were the um, biggest influences behind um, the uh, the lay of? Is it Thrim? Thrim, yes. Uh, oh, thank God. At least, at least I know how to pronounce it correctly. It's like, I was, I was like looking at it, it's like, I don't know how to pronounce it. I hope it's the layer Thrim. If not, I'm going to be in loads it of is. trouble. It is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, now, what would you say, with, like, you know, not just lyrically, but like musically as well, what would you say uh, were the biggest influences behind the, uh, the writing of it? Uh, there's a lot of Scandinavian um, traditional music in it. Um, and that would probably be the main influence. And there are a song or two where there is no traditional influence, and for those, um, uh, I'm not really sure what, what inspires that. I just write music that I think sounds good. Uh, Taylor wrote some music for it. Gunnar wrote a bit of music for it also, and um, and uh, as for what inspired them, you probably have to ask them. Um, yeah, but I, I really didn't give it my thoughts where, where the stuff that's not traditional uh, comes from. Yeah. Um, it's just stuff that I play and think sounds good. Yeah. But it, it probably was inspired by something. I just didn't, I have no, uh, I can't trace the, the yeah. inspiration right yeah. now at least. I probably could have gave it some time. Yeah, right. And since they're still doing the sound again, uh, one last question now, I have to be this time. Um, how would you say that the um that she itself from the best from the first album, how far it does go to give it one to lay a friend? It's very, very different. Uh, the first one was uh, pretty much a doom album. Yeah. A progressive doom album. And uh, now we are, I don't know, pop metal of some kind. Yeah. So, uh, slightly progressive, folk uh, inspired uh, uh, power metal, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah. so uh, if you know all the albums in between, you can probably hear it's the same band. But if you only heard the first one and the last one, I think you would probably not think it was the same band. Yeah. So uh, a lot, a lot happened. A lot changed. Yeah. 